What's happening YouTube, it's Frankie Davey. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm here at Fen Farm with my man Johnny, who is an expert and the owner of this place. And yeah, we're gonna talk all things dairy, raw milk, and hopefully learn a thing or two. Let's go. Hey Frankie, the cows, is, this is um, just at the sort of point of um, cat, cows going out to grass again. Yeah. So in the UK, you know, because the weather's not so good at the winter time, we usually house them. Yeah. But just in the last couple of weeks, We've managed to get the the milking herd out onto grass so i think it'd be go good we'll go and visit them first of course of course this baby calf here was born this morning uh there's too many to give now too many <laughs> we'll call, it, we'll call this one frankie the calf <laughs> oh, okay there we go yeah let's <laughs> frankie the calf i'll take that <laughs> we've been yeah. a uh, dairy farm here for a lot of years so i'm like third generation dairy farmer of wow. a family farm here oh so it's, in, it's stayed in your family as yeah. well yeah wow. yeah so we've uh, farmed here since the late 1940s um, along these marshes and but we we never we always sold our milk to a big dairy um, processor yeah you, you know like the big the big names what you see in the supermarket you know I remember in my late 20s where it was like the milk price was so under pressure mm. and I thought like you know that we must be able to do more than like being stuck in this sort of like place where we're always like being told how much they really squeeze you don't they, they? squeeze you yeah, yeah. yeah. And what we can do which other people can't do is sell raw milk now there's some interesting there's some interesting legislation in place which only re it restricts where you can buy raw milk mm -hmm. and you can't buy it from a shop it has to be bought direct from the farmer back in 2011 we set up our um our first day's worth of milk we, we got some poly bottles and some luggage tags um off amazon and stuck some stickers on the luggage tag and tied it to the bottle just to make it look different and we put it there in just 30 liters and during that day with the with the sort of like the milk shed being like painted like a cow it looks a bit interesting yeah. and people were like drawing in off the road pulling in going in and buying this yeah because you do see it even as i drove it's, it does stand out the fact that it's you don't need a, any manpower or anything to run it i actually get my eggs and you guys will know this i get my eggs from a similar thing where you go in there's a vending machine yeah so you, you tap your card and then it opens up the slot and you pull out a tray of, well, I get like 60 at a time, but you can just get six eggs. There's different, there's yeah, different can, holes for yeah, different so amounts. Yeah, so you can get like a big uh, like yeah, tray. Yeah, yeah. Or and again, I think that's, it's, it's interesting how you've got a similar concept, but for milk. People started coming to us, far, other farmers, and saying, where did you get your milk vending machine? So oh. people were reading it in newspaper stories and on the TV about this vending machine. And then other farmers came to us and wanted to know where we... Did you tell them? Yeah, I, I started oh, selling did? vending machines. Oh, we started selling, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the true businessman right here. <laughs> Sells the milk and the vending machines as well. <laughs> it's interesting, you said, so they actually prefer, well, not prefer, but they like the shed. They just want the easy life. So in a shed... <laughs> who, do, who doesn't? <laughs> in the shed, it's, um, you know, it doesn't, they never get wet. Are you, you, you're okay with cows? Look, they're more scared of us, but it looks Yeah, they're not, they're not nasty at all. Just though. don't look at them. <laughs> we have a special breed of cows here. So that this is, you know, you're thinking a black and white Frisian, Holstein, that kind of breed. But these yeah. are predominantly Montbelliard cows. So they're a French breed. Can you stroke them? Yeah, a few. Oh. So, look, this one here, look. This is actually insane. Look, look this, they, cows don't have teeth at the top either, if you knew. They only have bottom teeth. They're just hoping that we're gonna we're gonna let them home. They just want to go home and get in that shed. They're thinking about food for di yeah, they're thinking about their dinner. It's okay. a French breed. That one there is actually got some Frisian in it. The black one. Black, yeah. yeah. But it, it's it's two thirds Montbelliard, one third Frisian, but it's still okay. coming out black. Yeah. But it's it's probably if it, its daughter will probably turn out red. Milk from these girls, so it has. Uh, a higher A2. Um, um, oh, yes. Which, which is because of the, 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 the A2, the A1 gene in the cow. Um, I'm not 100% not sure on the science, but it's, it's about like, uh, like an amino acid chain and it's about like the 104th amino acid, mm. a high percentage of A2 milk. So yeah. it's a lot of the older breeds. The A2 gene is still present. The A1 gene seems to be more dominant in cows which are more modern like more modern genetics right and the other side of it is the montbelliard has a really high protein content in its milk so um your so gains yeah well it's, it's just it's just got more solids so yeah. you know when you drink a liter of uh, pint of milk 
you know, these girls there, the fat level's higher and the protein level's higher. So yes. it's like really good stuff. Because, yeah, high, um, high fat, high protein, that is, that's something that I like personally in my own diet. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, uh, so it's, it's got full of goodness and milk being one of like the, the two superfoods as in eggs or milk. Yeah. Um, so you can sort of kind of survive on milks. I've never tried it. No, no. I mean, don't try this. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but, well. um, but the, in theory, the, it's a superfood. So it's, um, uh, it, you know, and when you've got the amount of fat and protein, what we've got in our milk, then it's just that much more better for you. The difference between like raw, a bottle of raw milk to a bottle of pasteurized milk is the time. So right. that, it has an, that is an important um, element to raw milk as well. Because when it leaves the cow with us, we're putting it into bottles yes. within like 12 hours. It's in a bottle. And then it's like either straight with a customer in the shop or it's on, you know, out in the post that day yeah. and on the next day. Yeah. Whereas pasteurized milk, it's just a little bit longer. So the milk might be another one, two, three days older. Older, right. Um, and what happens over time is the bacteria, even in pasteurized milk, the bacteria which is not killed in pasteurized milk, which is a bacteria known as uh, Pseudomonas mainly, um, those bacterias start growing. So you think about pasteurized milk, it's like, well, it's killed all the, ba bad, the bugs and stuff. So mm. it's, 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 um, you know, it's not going to have bad things in it. But actually, the milk, is, the milk has still got bacteria alive. You yeah. can't kill all the bacteria till you reach about 130 degrees. Okay. So that's UHT milk. Yes. So that's sterile milk. But normal milk is not sterile. And the, the milk in the fridge, when it goes off, it goes rancid and bad. Mm. And that's the pseudomonas mainly in the milk, pasteurized milk, which is going bad for you. But raw milk doesn't go bad, does it? It just well, goes a bit sour, is that it, right? It, well, no, it does go bad too. Oh, okay, it, okay. It, 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 <laughs> the thing is with raw milk, you've got m multiple different um, types of bacteria. So you've still got your pseudomonas and your, and your um, you, you know, the, the, like the, the not that, the spoilage ones but mm. you've also got good good ones too but what i would suggest with raw milk is that you sh you shouldn't really you should you need to drink it within its shelf life which uh, what what would you say the shelf life is for raw milk it depends on how clean you can get your raw milk um it's recommended um that you drink your milk within four days of leaving the cow the idea of pasteurizing was put in place to kill pathogenic bacteria mm. so these are the guys which make you seriously ill so um, that was the original reason why uh, milk was pasteurized. With the difference with raw milk to pasteurized milk, you've got um, the milk isn't homogenized. Yeah. So um, when you homogenize milk, that's when you go to a supermarket, you buy a bottle of milk, and there's no, no cream line on the top. Right. Um, and the cream, um, so that was originally, homogenization was originally brought in to, um, to uh, so they say to stop the blue tits like tapping through the foil and getting oh, to the cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they started homogenizing it. Some would say like, well, that's great because now I don't have all this cream sitting at the top and I don't have to shake milk. But there's a there's a, a lot of evidence out there what shows like homogenizing is actually bad for you. So if you break up the fat globule into small pieces, the 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 fat the way we process the fat in our stomach. It is, is more of a negative way. It's not as healthy for you if you eat whole fat. So your body, um, the fat globule from milk, your body can recognize that and digest it in the right way. This right, fat is okay. a very, really important part of our diet. Yes, yeah. But it's the right fat. It's often, know? fat is often demonized. I said this a lot in, in some of my other videos, but as you said, yeah, if it's the right fat, it's very good for you. We literally, we stand still for about a minute and we get surrounded. Right. We are the cow whisperers. It, you know, with the, with the cream from raw milk, it's unhomogenized, so the mm. fat globule isn't broken up. Okay. Um, and our bodies recognize that and can digest that better. Um, there we go. So, yeah, that's interesting, that is. So we, we digest the raw milk better than pasteurized milk. Yeah. Processed foods and, like, you know, ultra-processed foods and, like, the, the dangers of, like, eating this stuff. Mm. Y you know, and I know we're all guilty and we all do it yeah, now and yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's... It, 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 there's more and more evidence supporting this now that you, you know it's really bad for you. I think that's a that's a key point that's definitely worth saying on the video because I I completely agree. We all we all do indulge. I especially indulge in 
cakes, desserts, everyone knows that. But I don't mind a good cake. A as good well, cake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. We're going to get some cake after this. But as you said, the the amount of ultra processed foods that are that is consumed mm. today, I think, is is actually the root cause in a lot of diseases that most yeah. people have, or, or issues, I, gut issues, I, skin, I, everything. I, I, and I think that's some of the things which we, you know, like we all get caught up on, like you know, raw milk and you know, and yeah. and like the dangers of raw milk. But we don't talk enough about the the stuff what we're doing day to day. Day to day, yes. Slowly, we're slowly killing ourselves. Killing ourselves, yeah. As you said, I've, I've mentioned this before in a video. Everyone looks to try and optimize the the one percent, whereas actually, if you just focus on the the groundwork, which is, for example, oh, should I have raw milk rather than normal milk, or actually, no, let's just cut out the ultra processed foods for at least eight mm. percent of the time and eat a, a solid whole food diet. That's probably what we should focus on yeah. more. Yeah, we're so sort of caught up on like. Um, light you know like butter light or, oh, or yeah. you know like yeah. all these things what like make you think you're eating something healthy like it's a bad thing so they they pretend it's healthier by putting water in it yeah yeah it's just you're i'm against the, the you know the fat free and the the light versions i think they've just had all the goodness and the nutrients stripped out they're even worse i think so there are no bulls here so the girls they just jump at each other of course yeah i didn't yeah. think about it yeah environmental impact yeah and a country like the uk which has got good grass growth our strength is in grass yeah we can't eat grass these girls can so you know you just got to think about the bigger picture here mm. if we get to a point where we like don't have cows and we're all buying um like genetically modified oh, yeah. um, um <laughs> like high protein Meat. soya based yeah yeah um you know products from other countries which we can't grow in this country is that actually any better than like just just doing uh, it how yeah. nature intended yeah someone said about drinking raw milk and stealing um stealing the milk from the baby calves what, what would be your opinion and how would you answer that um so the, the you've got to remember like we've like uh, the human uh, race we've evolved in a way where we've brought up you know we've domesticated animals and brought like like these girls here this is 2000 years worth of of um evolution in the way we've no more than having your own pet like a cat or a dog it's the you, you know it's not as straightforward as saying you take milk from a cow what that, that should be the calf what has that because the human population is on this planet and we rely on in particular things like cows to feed us. To feed us, yeah. It's more than enough milk for the calf. And um, the milk, what you take, which you then provide into making food, the calf doesn't like shrivel up and die, does it? No. The calf no. grows into a big animal just the same yeah. and becomes a cow equally. I so, suppose that's evidence of that. Look how many cows there are. There's, there's no, yeah. So it's just sort of something to bear in mind. So the long and the short of it is the calf isn't, it's still getting its milk and we're having some too. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, it, yeah, it also gives me a little bit of, as you said, the video, the, the food videos I have done, have done really well because people think, oh, well, if he's an athlete and he wants to eat to optimize his performance in every single way, I should probably, if I can take a little bit from that, then, mm. you know, then that's, they're yeah. benefiting. So I'm guessing that's why the videos are done quite well. Yeah. And also why I wanted to shine a light on this topic of how the animals are treated fairly, very well, very well. I've seen, seen them um, all looked after, all fed, Good food i'm guessing you, you can talk more about that as mm -hmm. well but you said something off camera and he said johnny here said um well actually i'll let you say it. i'll let you i'll let you say it again just that brief line you said over there it was what well, it was just more about the like we, we should really spend more time thinking about what we eat yes the, the, the con you know the consequences of what we eat has you know you put bad stuff in you get bad stuff out don't definitely you? exactly yeah um which is i guess I've, I've made many boxing videos many training videos but you guys seem to like the nutrition videos and that is why I wanted to shine a light on this whole topic, how we can optimize our performance and also health as well. It's not just about being an athlete and performing at the highest level, just just about eating what nature intended. How's Frankie getting on? So they eat pickled products mostly in the winter. So that's, and that's getting the salt in their food. Yeah. So okay. the salt, it just helps, you know, because so it's is very good for you. It yeah, is yeah. In, in, in proportion. Yes. I started when I was 15. And I, it, you sort of threw your dad or something? Or? No, I actually begged my dad. I kept saying, can you take me to the gym? Can you take me to the gym? And um, he eventually did. This was when I was 14. You he, wanted to get into the gym where all the other kids were just wanting just, to well, get yeah. stoned. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I did play football on the pitch. I liked 
I was a bit aggressive and a bit thingy. I had to go into boxing and it was something that once, it sounds a bit cliche, but once I did it, I never looked back. It was just, I ditched football within two years after starting boxing. You just boxing. found this yeah. really enjoyable. I think for me it was, <coughs> so when we'd play a match in football and we'd lose, I might have had a great game, but we'd still lose. That really <coughs> just grinded my gears. That because you, you felt you did great yourself. Yeah, so boxing, being, a, being an individual sport, obviously I have a team and I have people that help me and that's mm. key. But being an individual individual sport, if I mess up, it's on me. If I if I make a mistake, I get knocked out. That's, <laughs> that's my fault. But then also the flip side, if I win, it's also all on me. Yeah, yeah. So that must feel great. And yeah, yeah, I think the highs are higher, but the lows are lower. But ultimately, yeah, it's just it's a thrill like no other compared to other sports. Mm. Although having said that, looking back, if I'd have put as much effort <clears> I put into boxing now into football, I'd have been making hundreds of thousands and I'd be all right. Yeah. So I probably should have stuck with football. To be fair. So I'm just getting some content. <laughs> All local producers, local people. Um, mm. You know, coffee comes from Bungie. I, I mean, the beans probably didn't, but yeah. it was roasted <laughs> in Bungie. Yeah. Yeah, it's what... Um, so we have, like, bread each day from um, a company local to us called Penny Bun Bakery. Um, they make sourdough and, you know, they've mm. got lust, this rustic white tiger there. Um, <clears throat> I might and, call um, dibs on this, actually. I like the look yeah, of that. Yeah, almond croissant made in Bungie. Mm. Um, and then you've got in here, you've got, um, uh, you know, again, scotch eggs oh, and, wow. and, and whatnot. Um, Some sausage rolls. Salmon. Salmon, all, lo all local stuff, all within 20, 30 miles. Our own range is like we make the Baron by God cheese. We make skier yogurt. Yes. So that's yeah. a high protein yogurt. So the, the, like, the, the two go hand in hand. Like, so you've got your bungee butter. So that's our, our own butter, what we make on the farm, and the skier yogurt. So we take all of the cream. Um, all of the cream off the milk and we use the cream to make butter and all the and then, skim milk we then strain it and then make the yogurt a high protein yogurt mm. nice so yeah just literally uh, you, have you, you haven't used this machine before no never so it's it's just to hold it onto the nozzle and press one lead look at that Fresh from the dispenser. Oh gosh, the last time. So nice. It's so good. Mm. Okay, so I'm here with Johnny and we want to talk about the pros and cons of raw milk. We'll start with the uh, pros, I suppose. Okay. Really fresh. Mm. So it's as close as the milk you're going to get to straight from the cow. Yeah. Um, with raw milk and the legislation around raw milk in the UK, you have to buy it direct from a farmer. So you know mm. the source of where it comes from. Yes. So it will very often, well, it will always be from a single herd. Mm -hmm. So you can at least find out where your milk is coming from. Yeah. Um, one of the other benefits, what happens with raw milk is that it's literally the cow's teats are cleaned extra clean. Mm -hmm. uh, we chill the milk immediately. Uh, we then spend the next, uh, it spends the next 12 hours undergoing tests mm -hmm. at our farm. So we've got our own in-house lab, so we can test for any bad stuff. Bacteria. That, you know, bacteria yeah, cancer okay. is generally better for you and your body can digest it better. People are coming to our shop and being able to drink raw milk, whereas they can't drink um, pasteurized milk. Yes, milk. that's a key point. Customers are... Um, like pe people who uh, are, are like have allergies and, mm. and have uh, like achy stomachs from drinking yeah. pasteurized milk, they drink raw milk and there's no issues at all. No issues. Yeah, I've found I've found similar. I, I don't get on very well with with normal milk, mm. pasteurized milk, raw milk. I can drink as much as I want. I think it's the it's the just the over processing of the yeah. product. Those are the benefits. What would you say are the the cons or the negatives of raw milk? is the um, risk of the milk um, having bad bacteria in it. The reason milk is pasteurized is it kills pathogens. It's about making sure you source your milk from, the, from a farmer who um, has a, got a good reputation. Such as Fen Farm. Yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a good reputation yes. and is, uh, you know, doing, selling raw milk legally and mm. is um, registered with the Food Standards Agency. Um, that, that is an, a really important step. So. There's always a slightly greater risk with raw milk, but the benefits, you have to question, do they outweigh, outweigh. the negatives? Yes. But the key, key to all of it is make sure you source your milk from a good farm and you understand their sort of their, their practices and their hygiene of their milk.
pretty much everything what you use milk normally for, um, used in your raw milk, it just adds that just extra Enhances layer the flavor of flavor. Yeah. It, it, people say, what does raw milk taste like? And I just say, it tastes like intense milk. But as soon as you have the raw stuff, it's a different level of, of, yeah. of flavor. I've noticed that. I'd, I'd never, as I said, I never really drank milk because I couldn't tolerate it, but I also didn't like it, to mm. be fair. This, I, I could drink it like water. Mm. And it, another thing, it's very good for hydration, so I've read milk. Mm. Lot, everyone says about drinking plenty of liters of water a day to stay hydrated, but milk actually does hydrate you mm. uh, yeah. massively. It also, you see, where water is, it's got nothing else in it, yeah. apart from some minerals, maybe. Your, your, your raw milk is you've got, your, you know, your energy, you've got carbohydrates, yeah, fat, yeah. all you've the got, macronutrients. Yeah, yeah, sugars and salts, it's all in that, in that bowl. Go to the Raw Milk Producers Association website, and on there there's a map with all of its members, and Raw Milk Producers RMPA members are um, a high level, high quality yeah. raw milk producers, so it, that's a good starting point. Go to the RMPA website and then find the producer, to find to your local, yeah, your to local find, producer. that's a, that's a good point actually. A lot of people ask me where I get my raw milk from. It is from Fen Farm, but they also have plenty of stockists. But as Johnny just said, if you are interested in getting your own, go on, what website was it? The um, RMPA, Raw the, Milk Producers Association. The Raw Milk Producers Association website to see what what uh, local producers yep. are, are near you, so then you can get raw milk. Because a, a lot of you have asked, so there you go. Thank yep. Johnny for that one. <laughs> That's a wrap on the video. I hope you've learned something. I have certainly have. I want to say a big thank you to Johnny, everyone here at Fen Farm. It's been a great day, great experience. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, Team Davey.